Does a new bill allow the governor to get rid of school board members that disagree with him? We'll talk to the bill's author. This is The Delaware Way. Welcome to The Delaware Way. I'm Larry Menti. There is a bill being passed around in Dover right now that critics say would give the governor power to get rid of local school board members that he doesn't like. The author of the bill is Representative Paul Bombach, Democrat from Newark, Delaware. Uh, is that criticism fair at all? Um, uh, there's aspects to it that are fair, but in totality, no, it's not fair. Explain. Explain the bill, why you're, you're sending it around right now and what it would do. Sure. So we started working on this in the spring, and what we said is Delaware has no provision to get rid of a school board member who's not doing their job, and whether it be misconduct, uh, j just incompetency, willful neglect, those are the three criteria. We, we said, what do we need to do um, to enable a bad school board member to come out to make our school boards stronger? So uh, we looked around, we found Maryland had this approach that listed those three criteria. Um, so we in put that into a bill, but we didn't introduce it in June because di we didn't finalize it until June, late June. We didn't want to rush something through at that point. So we waited until December, right before January. We've got what's known as a pre-file date. So I put it out there to my colleagues to see if anyone was interested in joining uh, joining me on this, and uh, we got some blowback, as you as you point yeah, out. And, and that's what's interesting to me. You haven't even introduced it yet, and, and you're getting this kind of blowback. Did that surprise you? It, it did. It, and it, it surprised you that it made the paper. Yes, it did. Um, it, it, these are these are contentious times. You know, we have issues in D.C. that are very emotional. We have issues in in uh, Delaware that are very emotional. And one of those issues is the whole city of Wilmington schools within Christina School District. And I think that uh, this had a little intersection there as far as uh, some people who read it and and made connections where there aren't connections, but it's understandable how they connected those. So dots. somebody saw this bill as you were passing it around, doing your due diligence, passing it around, see if you could get support. Somebody saw this bill, had a problem with it, and instead of going to you went to the media. Yes, that's correct. How do you feel about that? That's um, not the I'm, way you do business. I'm is disappointed. It? It's interesting because that night uh, there were blog posts, but there was also people reaching out to me. And those folks, you know, I had one legislator said, I don't like the bill. I said, no problem. And, you know, what's your reason? Okay, good. I, thank you for letting me know. Um, another legislator just, you know, issued a missive about it. So um, it, that was disappointing. I'd rather people come to me. And, and everyone who's complained has my cell number. So it's not like they didn't know how to contact me. No one has yet come up and said, here's a better way to do that. Because this is a fairly good way. However, I didn't file it last week. Uh, because I wanted to give time in case we can find a better solution for the problem. But let's admit we have the problem up, up front. Let's, you, you, have, you have a problem. You can say that in any, any government, government organization, you should have a way to get rid of somebody from malfeasance, yes. malfeasance right? Uh, however, when you have a problem in local government, should the state step in? Well, well I think the answer is um, if they are not either doing their job locally to get rid of a bad member or if they're not enabled, if the state government doesn't enable them to do their job to get a bad um, player out of there, then I think we need to do something. The concern and the article and the concern that people leaked to the media sure. was that the governor may have some problems with local school boards when he wants to implement the way he wants to do things. They disagree and now he has a way to get rid of them so he can get his will. And the, and the reason that's not valid is this is not a if the governor wishes is one of the, the four reasons. No, there's three reasons. Willful neglect. Voting against something that the governor wants is not willful neglect of your job. It's not misconduct. It's not incompetency. So these concerns that the governor would have an inroad here isn't borne out by the facts and the content of the bill. So explain the process then. So the, the process is that the school board, sorry, the state board of education um, can uh, find that they want to go through, start this process out. Most often I would imagine this is going to be a citizen, a PTA, or a school board um, petitions the school board, the state board, to bring this one board member up. Board member gets notice. Uh, they can, um, they can affect uh, when the timing is. Uh, they get to face their accusers, bring counter um, arguments. The state board can conclude that that member do, did violate one of those three criteria and should be um, expelled. However, you then have the ability to go to superior court and have an appeal. So you've got the whole judicial process as your appellate process to, um, to make sure that we've got a full due, pro uh, due process there. I will tell you this, I've never had this long of a conversation about a bill that hasn't been introduced yet on the state level. I, I think it's, it may not be historic, but it feels historic. <laughs> Let's talk about a bill that uh, will be introduced uh, on, uh, 
assisted suicide in Delaware. I've covered this story in many other states, and every time this is brought up, it is it, it is controversial, and it runs into opposition both from the Catholic Church and especially from um, disability advocates. Yeah. How would it work in Delaware? Sure. It, so we've got 12 safeguards in there because you don't do anything like this without having. Uh, you know, belts and suspenders. Make sure you, you got everything covered. So, has to be an adult, can't be a child, have, have to be terminally ill, not chronic disease, has to be terminally ill. Disability does not, specifically, does not qualify. You have to have a terminal illness expected by more than one to two doctors as being, um, you have six months or less to live. Um, you need, the patient needs to drive this. No one else, you know, you, your son-in-law can't drive this, your doctor can't drive this, your insurance company can't drive this. It has to be the patient driven. There's several safeguards to make sure there's no coercion, that's the patient. There's also something where you can't decide real quickly. You've got multiple weeks between one stage and the next stage. So you have to request it of your doctor twice, and then there's also a 48-hour waiting before you can get the prescription, um, which the doctor makes out for you. You have to fill it, and you have to self-ingest it. So if you, you know, if, if you are in a coma, you can't do it. You can't do, no one can do this for you. And there's always a concern about insurance and about potential lawsuits. Does the state clear the doctor who's giving the prescription? Yeah, as long as the, the doctor is following the law, then they're following the law. Um, one of the uh, important points people are, are asking, they, you, you use the term suicide. This is not suicide. Suicide is someone jumping off a roof because they got fired. Okay, it's this, someone that's, killing themselves. Though, right? uh, that that is someone killing themselves who's living. Okay, this is somebody who's dying. They're affecting which day they die. Okay, they're affecting how much pain they go through in their last hours. Uh, that's not suicide. That is aid in dying. It's medical aid in dying. Um, and as long as the doctor is following those rules, um, and as long as the patient is following those rules. Uh, for instance, life insurance does not get stopped because we follow the same model that the other um, states and jurisdictions that have this do, which is the, on your death certificate, it's a terminal illness. That's what killed you. That's what's listed, and an insurance company can't stop your life insurance proceeds if you take this path. Everybody brings up the misdiagnosis examples. Valerie sure. Harper is a great example. Mm -hmm. She was given six months to live. She lives, uh, she's still living. Yeah, she's and, wonderful. And so there is the chance of a misdiagnosis. How mm -hmm. do you account for that? So that's why it's patient driven and no one's making that decision for you but you and everyone knows uh, that possibility you also have people who are given six months and, and they live six hours so yes we know that medicine is not that precise um, but we also know that doctors most often are overly optimistic and and they will typically give you more time because they believe in their 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 incredible skills um, so yes there are exceptions um, but those exceptions shouldn't make the rules and but most importantly as long as it's the patient that terminally ill patient who's making the decision, um, then they get to make that decision. Okay, sir, thank you very much very, for coming you. in. It thank was the you. first time. Please come back. Yeah. Representative Paul Bomback, Democrat from Newark, Delaware. When we come back, we're going to talk more about this with the education reporter from the News Journal when the Delaware Way continues.